Are you prospecting or building relationships? Is your social media repelling or attracting your audience? Today's topic, the gift of attention, how to earn it and keep it. Welcome to the Influencer's Journey Show. My name is Suzanne Hart. And I'm Taria Hodge. And the big question is, how does the average entrepreneur like us, who started with limited time, zero marketing budget, or little to no online presence get their authentic message into the marketplace and become a person of influence. And what skills must you learn? And most importantly, who are you required to become to magnetically attract your divine client and build a loyal following? Great morning, Suzanne. How are you? Well, great evening to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some, you know, sometimes it's like that, you know, morning, evening is morning somewhere, it's evening somewhere. So wherever <laughs> you are, great day. <laughs> great evening to you. And I am doing well. I am doing very, very well. Um, I'm, I'm still astonished at how quickly time is flying. Uh, but I think it's it's the it's the way the world is. I remember, I don't know about you, but I remember when, when I was young and my mother would say, when you get older, time's going to fly really quickly. And I didn't understand what she was talking about. Man, must be something with aging. <laughs> you know what? I, I think what it is, I think it's when you get really present to the things that you want to do, having goals and setting timelines and, and deadlines, you become so aware of time and how mm -hmm. to move. So I, you know, it's so funny that you said that because I reflected on the same thing the other day, man, when I was a kid, time always seems like it stood still. Now as an adult, I'm asking, where did the time go? And I don't know if maybe it's because we are actually focused more on time at this stage in our lives. I don't know, but it's just flying. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm excited for this topic. And uh, I mean, the whole concept of getting people's attention and it's such a big deal. And, and I'm not sure that people understand mm -hmm. one what a privilege it is and two how we how we actually go about earning it uh you know when as we were discussing this what really came to mind for me was when I first started um uh, my journey uh into sales and mm -hmm. you know I started in network marketing and they always talked about prospecting and as they showed me what I should be doing and all the scripts you get and all the lines you're supposed to drop, it always felt so awkward to me. It always felt so uncomfortable and I felt really fake. Mm. So I didn't really, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like, if this was sales, I did not like it. And so I struggled for my first year or so because I just couldn't do what I was being told. And then I remember working with a gentleman by the name of Kirk Metz. And he said that, you know, prospecting is really just going out and making a friend. Mm. And he said, you want to put a smile on someone's face and get to know them. And I remember sitting there going, well, why didn't someone just tell me that? <laughs> like, I, I could do that. And, uh, and, then I, and, and then he said, and your goal is to listen for what they need. Mm. And once I understood that, it was Prospecting became connecting and sales actually became fun because it became about fulfilling a need. And, you know, we talk about it all the time. I spend so much time connecting that by the time I'm ready to make an offer, I already know pretty well it's a yes. Now, I may not know what's in your wallet, but I know in your heart that there's a yes. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's really good. Such a good conversation. And, you know, I'm always going to bring it back to some social media. And I think that that's one of the things that a lot of people miss that really is no different doing it online as it is doing it on person. And so sometimes people take a look at social media in that vein where, you know, we got to go out there and this is the place to generate leads, or this is the place that we're going to, like I say, hack our wares. Everybody has a program, some tools, some program and, you know, service that they're selling. And they look at social media as the opportunity to do that. But I think 
think the question becomes, how do you really do it? And so I had a conversation this week where someone actually mentioned to me how bombarded they feel with content on social media. And mm -hmm. I really to stop and think about that for a while and say, wow, why, why is it that there are some brands that you see online and when you come across their content, it feels like you're just being bombarded. You're just being hit with content and you really have no connection to the content. You're struggling to find out why, what am I supposed to do? And then there are other brands out there that put out just as much content or probably even more. And you find yourself looking forward to receiving the content. Yeah, yeah. You find yourself looking forward to, oh, what are they sharing? So I think it's a really great question you know to ask is first of all like attention what really is it the thing that that gains people's attention and I love how we framed up the title because it is a gift and we're going to talk about that today and unpack it but how do you really earn it and how do you keep it so I too am excited to jump into the conversation Absolutely. Well, welcome to the Influencers Journey Show. If you're just joining us, please let us know who you are. Where exactly are you joining us from? What brought you out today and what you do while you're living? What is your passion? What's that thing you call your career? And if you're lucky, it's the thing you love to do. Let us know all about that. Let us know who you believe you're called to serve, touch, move, inspire. And I want to really get a sense of what was it about this topic that brought you out, stopped you, had you go and say, oh, I got to dig into this and listen. When you listen, please definitely let us know your takeaways, put your questions in the comment section, get involved in the conversation. Well, two reasons why this is our network op networking opportunity. It's a little bit of time for you to get to know us. And it's definitely an opportunity for us to get to know you and for you all listening to get to know each other. And we can do that through the, the virtual commenting um, and, and, sh and sharing in information. If you're listening to the replay, hashtag replay and do exactly the same thing. Who are you? Where do you join us from? What do you do while you're living? Who do you serve? And what brought you out today? I want to see the comment section lit up. All right. And then also before we jump into the heart of our conversation today, um, I want to remind you that we have a beautiful resource for you and it is called the Freestyle Speaker Playbook. We could actually grab access to that in the description below the video. So who is this playbook for? So if you are a coach, you are a an author, you are a course creator, and you want to know how to use speaking and storytelling as an effective marketing strategy to get seen, hired, and paid what you're worth, this playbook is for you. Now, you might say a playbook. Taria, what do you mean by a playbook? Well, let me just tell you, this playbook was created by none other, Suzanne Hart, Mindset Mastery Mentor. And what she has in there is five plays that you need to know in order to increase your visibility and attract more clients. So once again, don't forget, grab your resource. It's in the description of the video. And lastly, before we forget, if you have not taken a moment to subscribe to our channel, you want to make sure that you do that. It's the Influencers Journey Show right here on YouTube. And then also take a moment to invite your friends over as well to join in in the discussion. All right, it's time, Tria. It is the moment for us to dive into this conversation. So if you're just signing on, you're just joining us, um, I want to welcome you back to the Influencers Journey Show. Our topic today is the gift of attention, how to earn it and keep it. My name is Suzanne Hart, and as usual, I'm sitting down with my girl, social media strategist, Taria Hodge. So where do you want to start, Taria? This is such a great topic. <laughs> I think um, we could start at what you said at the top of the broadcast, the, the difference or, or the thing that you learned of, about prospecting and relationships and why exactly prospecting doesn't get you the attention that you want to garner. 
you know, um, it's interesting when I first started prospecting, as I said, I was really uncomfortable. And one of the reasons I realized is I was in my head. So let me ask everyone listening and, and you, Tria, have you done this? You are so preoccupied with your sale, with what you have to offer, with the information you want to give your content, that you're way focused on your content and you're actually not paying attention to the other person. Mm -hmm. So for me, prospecting became all about me and what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And he, and as I watch people do this thing, it was all about them and what they wanted. People would run around and collect cards. They would use these weird lines on people. And I'd always think, if you said that to me, I would walk away or I'd start laughing like, what? And so it just seemed wrong. And uh, to top it off, when I used to teach um I call it connecting with my team. And they came with this prospecting mindset. We do these role plays. And in the middle of the role play, I'd say, well, what did the, pro the person who you're trying to connect with say? And half the time they didn't know. Why? Because they weren't listening because they were so preoccupied with what they were going to say when the person actually stopped talking that they missed the moment, yeah. right? They missed the valuable information. So I like to call it connecting because I realized that's all I was going out to do. Mm -hmm. And the minute I figured that out, two things happened. I relaxed. I was no longer weird because I really got weird when it was prospecting. And I put all my attention on the other person. Mm -hmm. Like I was listening to them, like my life depended on it. Like there was something they were going to tell me that I just needed to know. And, and what would occur was then there was the usual back and forth in conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and I was beginning to develop a relationship. Right. And so my goal when I went out from there on in was to open the door to the possibility of a relationship with two amazing people. Yeah. And Taria, when I actually picked up the phone to talk to them, they'd know who I was and they were excited to hear from me because right. we had such a great connection. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's really interesting because like I said before, there's really no difference in doing it in person and then also on social media. So I see this all the time. And I have to admit when I first started out, I didn't get it either. So mm. when it comes to social media, you know, we're always taught to take a look at the metrics. We want to take a look at numbers, analytics. So some of the things that we would measure is the, the amount of likes you put out a piece of content. Yeah on social media, the first thing you want to know is like, oh my gosh, how many people are going to like this piece of content? And you're, you're focused, you're so focused on the number. And I remember sometimes feeling like, oh my gosh, I shared this, this piece of content here. And, you know, two people liked it versus <laughs> 50 people like it. And when your numbers are low and your numbers aren't exactly where you want them to be, you go in internally. And the, the the thing that I had to realize is, Taria, you are absolutely missing the point. The point mm. isn't just to have the numbers, like to see how many people like it or the, how many comments you could get. It's the actual connection to the people. And so whether you're sharing content and you get 10 responses or you get two responses, I always say it's important to go back and connect with those people who are responding because like I said, it's no different. So just imagine that you're on social media, you're sharing content and whether it's a video or it's a post and someone is actually engaging with it, one person, mm -hmm. and you look at the number and you say, oh, I only got one comment, only one person like this. And you're so caught up in a number that you forget to go back and, yeah. you know, really intentionally serve that person who took the time to give you their attention. Yeah, absolutely and, inter and interact with your content and when I made that shift in my business then what I realized is that I didn't need huge numbers because that's the thing that they teach us and they tell you that you need you need quantity 
and I had to shift from the quantity to the quality. So what's what's the relationship that's being uh. built? What's the intention that's being built when I share stuff online and people actually take the time to interact with it? Yeah, and, and it really is understanding that whether you're online or, or offline, you are relationship building. Mm -hmm. And I think people lose sight of that. As you were talking, it reminded me of, um, you know, the Jim Rohn's story. And I've seen Jim Rohn, the late Jim Rohn speak four or five times. So I've had that blessing. And, you know, he was speaking until until he was in his 90s. Mm -hmm. One of the stories he shared was when he, he for, well, middle of his career, um, and uh, he was doing this presentation and he had the room set up for a hundred people to attend, all excited, paid for the room, you know, they're ready to go. And he came out to speak and there was, I think it was two people in the audience, two. Mm -hmm. Now imagine you've got your room set up for a hundred and two yeah. people showed up and he said he spoke to those two people, like there was a hundred people, the, all the room was packed. Right. And, and I, it always stuck with me because of the intention and energy to which he brought to that mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. Very similar to your two likes, right? Mm -hmm. Or your two comments. And, uh, and then after he finished sharing the story, he said, but what he didn't know was one of the gentlemen that showed up and was sitting in the room was Tony Robbins. Mm. Now imagine if he just decided, I'm just going to do a half right. exactly presenta presentation. I'm not going to give it my all, or maybe I'm not going to present at all because there's not enough people here. You don't know. And, and, you know, it only takes one person to change your business. It only takes sometimes one person to one introduce you to that tipping point yeah. That opens the doors. And so there's young Tony Robbins sitting in his audience and we all know where the, where the, he went. So I think the thing is, is are you willing to extend the energy when someone shows up and gives you their attention to cultivate a relationship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Great, great, great stuff. And I love that. I did not know that story <laughs> of Jim yeah. Tony Robbins, but it, it illustrated the point beautifully. So thank you for that share. Learn something today. You're welcome. <laughs> so I, I have another question for you. So what do you think um, is the thing that grabs someone's attention? Mm. You know, it's, it's a great question. And, and oftentimes we think it is content. And I believe that content, and as we said last week, without contacts is not as powerful. Mm -hmm. And 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 as we said last week, if you didn't see the show last week, you just got to go back and watch it. Um, context is you. It's your stories. It's it's how you are with people, and because it creates relatedness. And so, uh, before I answer this, I want to tell you another story. So, um, one of the people. I admire in her ability to connect is this woman by the name of Nikki Kehoe. Mm. Nikki is just a beautiful soul, a mother, fierce businesswoman. Um, her and her mom have a company together. They do all sorts of different things. And um, I met Nikki many, many years ago now. The thing that struck me the first time we had a conversation was it was like everybody disappeared mm. and we were in a room. It was an event. It was a full room and it was like everybody disappeared. And she had such attention mm. on me because I was giving her my attention that she honored me. She honored my time. I walked away feeling so blessed, one, but two, wanting to know more about this amazing woman who in the middle of this room gave me her time. And her mother, Nikki Kihoho, did the exact same thing. Mm. And now if you look at their circle of influence, it is massive. 
And it's not massive by accident because they don't just have names on a list. Mm. They give you their attention because they're actually giving you their listening. Right. Right. And they're giving you their listening with their ears, their eyes, their energy, their body, everything. And so you feel like you're the only person in the room. Therefore, you feel valued, important. And who would not want to be in that space? The last thing I'll say in answering this question is this is so key because we live in a society and in a world where things are moving quickly, Mm -hmm. where people feel very isolated. People do not often get the attention of others in a real way. And if you're able to give it and honor someone and give them your attention 100% because they stop to give you their attention. Right. Magic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, right. absolutely. Yeah, and you know, it it's really great because it it is an art and it is something that you you first have to be present to it. And like I said, it's the difference of showing up just sharing content and right. a connection. And so I'll I'll share one of the things that I also saw online that I thought was very beautiful. And I started to adapt it into my strategy. And now I teach it to my clients as well. And then when I tell mm-hmm. you, it's a difference maker. And so once again, being able to really hone in and use this tool that we call social media for the powerful tool that it is. And so I remember the first time that I listened to a broadcast and I heard the, the speaker on the broadcast address the audience by a name. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that is absolutely so cool. And so immediately I started to feel a sense of belonging. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, wow, I'm definitely going to try this strategy. And as I started to do my broadcast and I started to do my shows, I gave my audience a name. And so, you know, I, I call, you know, social media Saturdays, I call them superstars and we've adapted super achievers for yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm going to tell you the impact of that is huge because what I see and have experienced for myself is that people love it. People start to identify themselves yeah. as superstars. They start to connect with you. They start to identify as super achievers. And the really cool thing is you, you're having a conversation And like, you know, that many people are on there, they're watching, but everyone feels that the message that you're delivering is specifically tailored or catered catered to them. And so it's always a beautiful thing after we end our shows for people to reach out to us and connect and say, oh, wow, you did that topic. And in that broadcast, I felt as if you were speaking to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, one of the really nice things about choosing those names, I remember when um, we were talking about a name and it was like we were we were tossing around different names and different. Mm-hmm. No, that's not it. That's not who our people are. That's not. And, and, I, and we were saying we're going to call them by name. Mm-hmm. So it has to fit their character. Wow. And I think that's so key because in that name, we say, we see you, right? We see who you are. I know who you are. I know what you're up to. I know what drives you. And so choosing the name, I remember going through all sorts of stuff. And then I read a book and I said, Taria, I found the name, (laughs) right? Super achievers. And, and it was just such a perfect thing because the stuff I was learning in the book, it was like, oh no, yeah. Super achievers. The other thing I really want to also talk about is is the whole concept of taking the time to know someone and meet someone to know them by name Mm -hmm. and one of the tricks that works so beautifully on stage and I always show up as I said early 
and I show up early to work the room. And what I mean by work the room is actually to get myself climatized, comfortable, get rid of some of that nervous energy and make friends in the room before I take the stage. And, and people are going, friends? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go build some relationships. I'm going to create some people who are going to end up rooting for me because they met me before I took the stage. A lot of times they don't know I'm the speaker. They met me and we had a beautiful conversation. What I love when it happens, because there's always synergy in your in your presentations, mm -hmm. is to be able to call someone by name from the right. stage and say, oh my goodness, before I took the stage, I had this beautiful conversation with such and such or Tammy or Andy. And you see people are like, oh my goodness, she remembered me. I remember sitting down and having lunch with Les Brown and we were in this auditorium of thousands, I think it was like six, 7,000 people. And, um, and when he took the stage, he said, oh my goodness, I had a chance to sit down with Miss Suzanne Hart. And I was like, oh my God, Les Brown just called me by name. I felt so special. Uh, and, and not only did he call me my name, he talked about some of the things that we had talked about. Now you imagine how many people he's meeting that day yeah. and how connected mm -hmm. and unique I felt. That's what we're talking about when we say, you know, when someone gives you their attention, you want to honor it by how you attend to them and give back attention. Right. Yeah. And, 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 Oh my gosh, this is so good because like I said, we're talking and 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 I hope that our super cheapers who are listening, they're really picking up on the parallels because we've been saying it. There's really no difference on what you do or how you do it offline and how you bring it to the online space. And so Absolutely. as we we're talking, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's why we do stuff like this. That's and and this is the reason why I actually love live broadcasts. So just imagine I went from the person deathly afraid of the camera to now this being one of the favorite things that I do, because number one, I got out of my head with it. And it's not about the numbers it's about connecting with the people and right. so with your people. And so one of the things that I love about, you know, being in the social media space is you get the opportunity to do that as well. And you could do it as many times as you like. So just imagine doing a broadcast and people are on there. Just the simple fact of acknowledging someone on your broadcast, mm -hmm. calling them by name, acknowledging their comment, answering their questions. And then when you do it again and they show up, they get yeah. attention, they show up again, you acknowledge and you thank yeah. them for coming back. And yeah. what you'll start to see is people will show up, they'll come back because yeah. they know that they're receiving value. They're, they're, first of all, they're being recognized and then you give them a chance to be heard. And then you give a chance to, like I said, pour value into them. And, and that's priceless. And I think that if our super achievers who are listening to this, if they haven't started to incorporate, you know, these strategies and what we're talking about here is attention and it brings to mind one of the principles of social selling that I always like to talk about, and it's social listening. So yeah. how well, do you give yourself the opportunity to listen to your audience yeah. and, and, and create the environment? That's the first thing, because sometimes people tell me that they struggle with social listening. I don't know. I can't get the information that I, I need to do better and add more value. But the question becomes, how well do you create the environment for that to happen? How well do you create the environment for people to give you the attention? And and feel and feel comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, we you know, the topic, it's it's how to earn it and keep it. And so we focus, you know, significantly on how to earn it. But how to keep it is also really key. Right. And one of the things that I have learned to do is to continually reach out. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm the queen of follow-up. I'm the queen of 
I'm going to go talk to you. And I don't mean talk to you because I have something to sell you for you, sell to you. I'm going to talk to you because I just haven't heard you in a while. Mm -hmm. And we had someone on our freestyle program uh, on the weekend who said, oh yeah, I, I went MIA and she came looking for me. <laughs> and she told me never do that again. And, and it was such an interesting thing because it happened about five years ago. However, she felt so blessed and privileged by yeah. the fact that I would pick up the phone and go, I haven't seen you in a while. What's up? What do you need? What's going on? And we ended up having this really deep and meaningful conversation. Right. And so I think the other part of keeping it is not just talking to people through your emails, right. not just talking to people through your text and social media, but doing something that seems to have gone to the wayside is picking up the phone. Yes, you can pick it up, put in your earbuds and have and, and, and dial someone up and give them your attention. Check in. How are you? What's up? What have you been up to? How are things going? And at first it used to feel comfortable because uncomfortable when I first started, because it was always attached to a follow-up. What magically began to happen was whether I went to an event and met two people that I wanted to build a relationship with, or whether it was someone in my client list that I was reaching out to, I would always go, just want to check and see how you're doing. And people are like, oh, well, thank you. And they would share. And then my second question would be, is there any way I can serve you? Yeah. And, and it, we will be like, oh, uh, uh, and so taken aback by the question. And, and however, that question has created depth in relationship. Right. Because yes, sometimes people have an, an, an answer. Sometimes they don't. However, it opened the door for when they did have a need to be served. And because, and I want you, everyone to get this, because of the context of what I do, people will call me within that context. Mm -hmm. So now people are coming back to me going, hey, can you help me with this? Well, I can help them in many ways. Sometimes it is, yeah, let's just do it now. Sometimes I'm recommending a program. Sometimes I'm recommending one-on-one -on -one time with me. However, I've earned that attention. I've earned that ask by being available when there was nothing but the gift of me being available. And this is the piece because it is a blessing for someone to choose me. Mm -hmm. It is a blessing out of the sea of possibilities for someone to say, you're my person. Yep. And I need to one value that attention and make sure I earn the right to keep it. Yeah, I, I like how you said that no, you have to earn the right. And that's the thing that I find that a lot of people like totally miss. They jump on to platforms and the assumption is because I put out the, the content out there, the mm -hmm. postings and the promotions, then automatically because I'm able to hit a pain point or say this is what the pain point is. And then I could craft the transformation or let you know where you need to be. And I could put together a beautiful offer. I see these things all the time. But here's the thing, even though those things are crafted beautifully, if people mm -hmm. really don't connect with you, then they're not going to take the next right. Okay, so it's once again, building that relatedness with people. Um, I, I love how you your term is earned the right. And so yeah. I always like to talk about the no like and trust factor. And I have seen, you, can you imagine, Susanna, I just want to unpack this for a second. I have seen people out there in the marketplace actually have conversations and tell people that no like and trust, you know, isn't relevant anymore that people don't need to know like or trust a brand or a person that they're doing business with and I'm here to say hogwash can I say that hogwash that's absolutely crazy because it, it, and, and I and I will just say that it I, I'll take it back it, it it depends on 
how you want to grow your business and who you want to have in your space. And so the difference is if you are just out there pushing products, then of course you're going to get people to buy your products and you will forever spend time doing the numbers game. And I am probably safe to say you probably have some low end products, but yeah. That's not the, that's not who we're speaking to today. So we know we are talking to our, our coaches. We're talking to our authors, our course creators who have not just low end products, but they have programs. Yeah. Okay. And things. So you really need to get this. So the whole idea that you have to look at social media as a serving tool. So how do you continue to serve and show up and serve and build your know, like, and trust factor? So not only yeah. do you get the right, the, the, the people to your business, but you get the right people, because that's what we always talk about here is who are our people? Who are the people that we are divinely called to serve through our unique gifting? And so once you understand these concepts and these principles that we're sharing with you, it just makes it easier for that to happen and occur. You know, I'm I'm reading, I just started reading Sam Walton's book, Made in America. Mm-hmm. And you know, I love, I love mm-hmm. biographies of highly successful people. And I guess he qualifies, 50 billion. Um, and and some great tips in that book. There was a line he said that was just so simple. He said that one of the reasons his stores, when he first started out Mm -hmm. uh, and he, in those little small stores did so well was he would spend a lot of time on the street. And he, and he said, if someone started walking towards me, I would start talking to them. And invariably they would stop and talk to me. And he said, I ended up knowing their name, a little bit about their family, all these things. And then they would start coming into the, to the store. They start coming in. And he said he did that, you know, in when he had his paper route, when he was in college, when he was, you know, in high school. And he said, no matter where he went, mm-hmm. he ended up knowing everybody and everybody knew him. And it was that simple thing of starting a, re- a conversation, having that smile on your face, being open and creating that no like and trust. And, and I know for myself, I'll buy a little widget from you for a dollar or two if I don't know you. Right. However, if I'm gonna drop some real money, I need to know you. I need to know, and I don't need to know, just know your credibility in terms of you're really good at what you do. I wanna know your character. I want to know that we have a value alignment. I want to know who you are and whether I can know, like, and trust you because I have people I know, I have people I like, but they don't pass the trust factor. And so I think it, it is very important that as we do this, we, we do this work about making ourselves available to get people's attention, I think it's really important to know what it truly means. Yeah. Oh, wow. And and so as you were talking, I, I have two things to say. Um, first, for any of our super achievers who have not read the Sam Walton story, founder of Walmart, it is a very interesting case study in marketing and also in leadership. So thank mm-hmm. you for bringing that up. And then the second thing that I want to share is I want this to really land is people pay you first with their attention. All right. People pay you first with their attention. And if you can't get people's attention and hold their attention and they feel like they're receiving value from you, then it's going to be so hard for them to give you their money. And so a lot of times people take it out of order, like, oh, I, I I go for the money and then after I get the money, then I'll deliver the value. And it's absolutely the opposite way. So you deliver the value. And once people 
feel like they're receiving value, you know, from you, then it makes it so much easier for them to want to do business with you and to, you know, give the money and buy into mm -hmm. it. So you know, it, it, it's such a great point you're making. Uh, when I first started in sales, I remember um, one, of pe one of the people that trained me um, asked me my reason, my why. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I, I needed money. And I said, I, I, I'm, I'm here to make money. And he said, no, 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 that's not going to fly. And I didn't get it at first. And, um, and then he asked me, but why are you here? And then I started talking about what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do for my family, what I wanted to do for other people and all these different things. And he said, now you're touching on the real reason why you're here. And he said, if you chase money, people will smell it on you. And you'll get knocked out of the game easy. He said, if you ch chase your dreams and and the and help people get their dreams, right. you'll do really well. And I've always remembered that because one of the things that also struck me was he knew the dreams of everybody in his team, like everybody. He knew what they were up to. He knew what was important. He knew what they needed to get there. And so he built this massive organization. However, the part of it was, and he made a lot of money, Right. But he made a lot of money through serving. Yeah. And, and he, if I help a lot of people get what I want, they're what they want, I will always get what I want. And I thought, okay, that is what it's all about. So if I give people the attention they need, they will go, they will most often give me back the attention I desire. Yeah. And I think it's it's that like attracts like energy flows both ways that boomerang effect if you will if you're if we want to talk mindset it's that law of vibration right yeah oh absolutely, absolutely. okay okay all right so I'm gonna shift directions oh I, I was about to shift and ask go ahead. <laughs> So I want to shift direction a little bit. You mentioned something early in a broadcast and you said that you had a, a switch from prospecting to connecting. So my question is, how did that switch make you feel about sales? Switching from prospecting to connecting, how did it make you feel about sales? Well, when I started, sales made me nervous. Mm. Uh, sales made me uncomfortable. And I think the most, the other thing was asking for money for a thing was difficult. Mm -hmm. Now I had all my money conversations and that's a whole different uh, show. So yes, I had that going on. However, asking for the money for a thing was different. What switched for me and you know, I, I totally enjoy sales. Um, and I enjoy selling the things I'm passionate about, just so so people know. And and so what switched for me was when I started connecting mm -hmm. and I started getting to know people and I started really understanding what they needed, what floated their boat and melted their butter, if you will, what got them excited, what they valued, what was missing. When I was able to make an offer, I made an offer in alignment with what was missing for them, what they needed. What was interesting was I realized when I give someone something they value, price is no longer an issue. And so I was just like, oh, so if I serve you and fill a missing, a gap in your world and I serve you beautifully and I create value, it doesn't occur as a sale. It occurs as a gift. It occurs as a blessing. It occurs as this opportunity I'm inviting you to take part in. And, and so what began to happen was one, I began to have way more fun. 
Mm -hmm. I began to sell a lot more. I began to sell bigger tickets. And, and what also was the most amazing thing where people were so grateful. And I still have people today. I was on a call yesterday with a gentleman that I introduced to a product. Oh my gosh, 10 years ago. And he still today talks about how I changed his life. Wow how I impacted his life. And because it wasn't about the financial transaction, right? it was about the value right. and the attention, yeah. right? Because it wasn't the transaction that I'm gone, it was the value and the attention, the follow-up, the continual attention that created the relationship that is over 10 years old, Ooh. right? Ooh. Great, great answer. So thank you. Thank you. And, and it's, it's, it's actually such a meaningful answer to look back on mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it makes me feel good about what I get to do right. while I'm living, right? Um, so- and, and before before you ask, and, and I think I just have to add that because that's the key right there that I think stops a lot of people is that they- not only want to be successful in what they do, they want to feel good doing it. So thank yeah. you for that. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's a blessing to feel passionate about what you do, mm. to feel that um, people give you their attention because they see value and to be able to know, like, you know, your name, that you're going to return excellent value. Um, it just makes the equation just so beautiful. And I'm blessed that that's the seat I get to occupy at this stage in my life. I have a question for you. And I know that we have had countless discussions in this area. <laughs> because our face, ooh, what's the question going to be? We have had countless discussions. And I want you to share or answer this question. Why is social listening such a vital step in your savvy social selling cycle? Ooh, that's a really good question. Hmm, where do I start? I know it's a bit. I know it's a bit. <laughs> it's a cold note answer. <laughs> so um, I think that there are three things I want to say specifically. So I think the first thing that I'll start with is what is the savvy social selling cycle? So sometimes people really don't know that there's a process, right? To I didn't know. <laughs> I'm all super cheapers out there. I didn't know till we sat down. Yeah. So here's the thing. I didn't know either when I first started. That's the crazy thing about it. Because once again, the, the things that we hear all the time is that social media is such a wonderful place for us to position ourselves because there are billions of people on social media. And how could you not be successful on social me media when you have the opportunity to touch billions or to be in front of billions, right? So that was the first thing. So I actually had to learn that there's a process to it. Mm. And when you follow the process, it is so golden and it brings everything that we talked about today into play. But here's the problem. The problem is a lot of people start at the end of the process. Okay. And at what's, the, what's the end? What's so the end? I was about to say at the end of the savvy social selling cycle, it's social selling. And so, or, or actually I've enhanced it a little bit. So what we have at the end of my cycle is social follow-up, but the social selling is actually, uh, it's actually a real thing. And at the mm -hmm. end of the process is social selling. The problem is people start with social selling, meaning that they start by showing up offering their products and their services. And once again, thinking that because there's a lot of people on social media that they're gonna be successful. And so after I entered into the marketplace that way, I realized, no, that there are things that need to happen. And so the, the first step in the cycle is actually social listening. 
And mm. so listening is where you actually do the work. And this is a process. You actually do the work to listen and gain intel from your audience. Then you have social influence. How are you positioning yourself in the marketplace? And for our super achievers, we all want to be seen as experts or to be known as experts in our field and in our industry. Yes. Then we have social networking, thing that we're talking about today, relationships. How do you... Use social media to build relationships. And then when these three things are done, it lays up a beautiful opportunity for the thing that's called social selling to happen and to not happen easy and to happen naturally. And then one of the things that I've learned also, like I said, I've enhanced it is to add another step onto it, which is the social follow-up. And this is where a lot of people miss the ball because after the transaction is done, they, they kind of disappear. And then once wow. again, your audience is left hanging. They always want to know what's the relationship, what's the next step. Like we say, how can we lock arms and continue to journey together? Because that's what people really want, okay? And so- yeah. mm -hmm. And so it the question that you ask, why is social listening such a vital step in this is a lot of times we create things out of our head. So I know Suzanne, in your learnedness, is that a word? In your learnedness. <laughs> it is today. Uh -huh, you could say, oh my gosh, I have gain this knowledge and I have gained this information. And I think that what I have learned here is something that the whole world needs to know. And so the first thing that you do, or a lot of people would do is go out and create a program. And so they spend time creating a program and then they take their stuff to the marketplace and nobody wants the program or the product. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they didn't take the time to do any social listening. And so even though you have a great idea and things that you want the world to have, you Absolutely. first have to listen and understand and know, you know, is, is this something that people really want? And the cool thing about it is if you ask them, they'll tell you. And the beautiful thing is, when you really get it, you could tailor what you produce to fit your people. One of the, the things that brings this to mind, and we say it all the time in our program, it's build your course as you are delivering the course. So that the, the saying is, build a plane while you fly the plane. And for some people, it's just like, that's absolutely crazy. Why would I ever want to do that? But this is what we're talking about. So as you create or have your idea on what it is you want to share, how well are you listening and getting feedback from your mm -hmm. audience? How, how are you using that intel that you are gathering? And that's what social media to me, like I said, it's such a beautiful tool. It's a place where you go in and you gather intel and you, you make that intel work for you in the means of how you give it back and serve your, your audience. And so um, I get very excited uh -huh. when we talk about you know, social listening, and we talk about the savvy social selling cycle, because what it has done for me is brought another dimension to social media. And so it's not just once again, focusing on the numbers. When I get on here, how do I make all of these things work in order for me to show up and to deliver value in every single thing that I do? You know, one of the things you talked about was was follow up, and and I I want to highlight that what makes follow up uh, easy is exactly what we're talking about mm -hmm. is relationships right. because I I know people who avoid follow up because it's all about getting the sale. If you get to a place with whoever um, you're talking to, 
and you know what they need or you're curious about them, follow-up becomes a lot easier hmm. because they will often tell you they will there there's an openness in the conversation when there's relationship there's an ease to the conversation when there's a relationship however when the conversation is cold and you got to do a follow up it's a little bit more difficult yeah. and so i think it's one having a a background of a relatedness that you've created or two going to the phone ready to create relatedness before you actually offer a, a sale and sometimes realizing in in the conversation that the sale is not appropriate yeah. it's, and and so you're going to build a rapport because there will be a better time there will be a better place there'll be a better opportunity there'll be a better fit and i think that's so key and that's what you were talking about when you talk about social listening online offline and deepening that relationship so you understand so you're always offering something that feels valuable to the person who's receiving the offer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. <laughs> Great, Great conversation. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> We've been spending too much time together. That's what it is. <laughs> All right. So I am going to let you go ahead and close us out with the thought of the week. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's interesting because there's things that I say there's things that you say. And then when people start asking you, what's that quote you, you say? And I'm like, what quote? <laughs> um, this is what it is. When someone gives you their attention, it is a gift. You must ensure that you respect the, their time, continuously add value and make them feel like they are the most important person in the room. That was said by none other than Suzanne Hart. Oh, and, and, and that quote, Sharia, is, is a compass for me. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, and I look for it and I watch for it. And, you know, with our, our, particularly our, our students that are in the, the freestyle speaker program, and they're with us for those six months, we drive this home. You got to earn the right. You got to earn the right. You got to earn the right. Did you earn the right? And uh, because it's key, it's so key. So. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. So, right. oh, wrap us up. Yeah, I was going to wrap us up. I was just about to say thank you once again, Super Achievers, for tuning in to another amazing, I think the conversation was amazing, episode of the Influencers Journey Show. So if you have not done it as yet, take a minute to grab your freestyle speaker playbook. The link is in the description. And also subscribe to our channel. That way you could get notifications every time we go live and you have the opportunity to join in the conversation and also invite another super achiever as well. And so until we meet the next time, know that you are brilliant, know that you are special and the world is waiting for your unique gift. Blessings and we will see you next week, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.